U.S. President-elect Donald Trump has reaffirmed his plan to implement significant tariffs on key U.S. trade partners starting on the first day of his administration next year. What will be the consequence be and how realizable is his plan actually? Our economics correspondent Lee Soo Jin joins us in the studio to discuss. Welcome, Soo Jin. Thank you for having me. So, Soo Jin, let's start with what the Trump's most recent tariffs plans are. Sure. So U.S. President like Donald Trump on Monday announced on his social media platform Truth Social that he will set massive new tariffs on China, Mexico, and Canada. This includes a 25% tariff on all products from the neighboring countries of Canada and Mexico to remain in effect until those countries take action to stop the flow of drugs and illegal migrants crossing into the United States. He has also announced plans to increase existing tariffs by an additional 10% on all goods imported from China until the Chinese government implements measures to combat drug smuggling, particularly of the synthetic opioid fentanyl. Washington estimates that almost 75,000 Americans were killed by fentanyl last year. And these tariffs are expected to take effect on January 20, 2025, the first day of his administration, as one of his first executive orders. Well, Su Jin, U.S. President Joe Biden also commented on Trump's tariff plan, saying that Trump should reconsider considering the, tra- the tariff threats are going to be counterproductive. Tell us more about that. Right. So we saw on the campaign trail that Donald Trump had repeatedly threatened big tariff hikes as part of his America First agenda, which seeks to bolster domestic industries. And while these efforts are intended to boost U.S. industries and the economy as a whole, they may ra- raise prices for U.S. consumers. Here's what experts said might happen. Uh, but a, a lot of American companies, especially automobile companies, are very worried because the automobile industry, uh, the U.S. automobile companies who have factories in Detroit depend on factories in Ottawa for their parts and uh, raw material. And this may lead to manufacturers relying on imported materials passing the higher production costs onto buyers. But while the impact of tariffs, according to experts, will be felt most by U.S. consumers, economies across the world will also see higher costs. Uh, But other countries, because they have to uh, keep U.S. in mind, will have to strengthen their monitoring systems and so on. So it will mean a rise in Uh, trade-related costs for everybody, and it will also mean that uh, there might be retaliatory tariffs. Now, Sujin, we have to talk about what the tariffs plans are or going to mean for South Korea. So I think that's what everyone's really interested in. Well, the tariffs imposed on Canada and Mexico, these are two of U.S.'s most largest, closest trading partners, Mm -hmm. signal that South Korea is highly also likely to be subject to these high tariff hikes. Let's take a listen to what an expert thinks will happen. Tariffs ranging from 10 to 20 percent more are expected to be imposed. If that is the case, the volume of exports from South Korea to the United States will drop. But here's what South Korean companies can do to minimize the impact. But the best we can do is to first point out how important Korean goods are for the American market and American consumers. And second, I think we need to bargain hard. Uh, We need to show that there will be consequences not only on the Korean markets, but American markets as well. The government is also moving to prepare proactive scenario-based response measures. The presidential office held an emergency meeting on Wednesday led by Chief of Staff of Foreign Policy, Song Tae-yoon, to evaluate the potential effects of proposed U.S. tariffs on Korean businesses. Tong warned that these tariffs could harm Korean firms relying on parts from Mexico and Canada for U.S.-based manufacturing. And although the direct impact on Korean firms from Chinese tariffs may be limited, reduced Chinese exports to the U.S. could hurt Korea's intermediate good exports to China. Then are there any other factors that will make it highly unlikely for the proposed tariffs to you know, materialize as planned? Yes, there are actually several that we can talk about. And it's unclear how Trump will be able to carry out his plans as many goods coming to the U.S. from Mexico and China are exempted from tariffs under the terms of the United States-Mexico-Canada agreement that was actually negotiated during Trump's first term and went into effect in 2020. The agreement was made to modernize trade rules while maintaining tariff-free trade for most goods exchanged between the three countries, and the 25% tariff would undermine this. 
It also includes mechanisms to resolve trade disputes, meaning if the U.S. imposes unilateral tariffs, it would, it would expose the U.S. to legal challenges buying Mexico and Canada. And according to U.S. Census Bureau data for September 2024 on goods traded, Mexico is the largest trading partner of the U.S., followed by Canada and China, the very three countries that he has said he would impose tariffs on. As for China, while it's not part of a formal trade agreement with the U.S. like Mexico and Canada, their trade relationship is still governed by the World Trade Organization, which they're both members of, that seeks to limit unilateral tariffs. This is why it is seen more as a, as a move to pressure trade partners into renegotiating terms that favor the United States, leveraging the threat of tariffs as a bargaining tool instead of putting them into effect directly. Well, Sujin, we'll have to get back to you on the first day of his uh, back to the office. Thank you for the wrap-up today. No problem, anytime.